right. Welcome to Sunday Stretch and Flow. So to start out um, this morning, I'm just going to suggest really any starting position um, where you can really just sink down and feel comfortable. So if it's just um, your regular savasana, maybe you have a blanket and the bottom edge of it is rolled up and you'd like um, another blanket to come underneath your knees. If you have a wall handy and want to do legs up the wall, that's really nice. Um, we will need a strap today. If you um, would like, I guess we kind of call it instant Maui, to put blocks, placing, um, if you had a bolster, but a blanket works just fine, and then your calves rest on that and laying down, that's another option as well. Just looking for something that really calms your nervous system. And whatever shape that is for you, just allow yourself to get into that. Take a minute to adjust. Take a minute to just go through your body and see if there's somewhere that breath can show you where a little bit of tension can be released. Maybe you're holding a little tension between shoulder blades, let that release. And just let breath start to draw you in. Don't um, Force, you might already be breathing deeper and that's fine. But just see what happens with breath right here. And if you haven't already increased that length and spaciousness of the breath, go ahead and take a big, deep inhale on your next inhale, getting really wide. And take time today to focus on that exhale, letting it be slow and steady. And once you reach the bottom of your exhale, see if there isn't just a little bit more you can release. A little bit more of that exhale to let go. You might notice with that long, slow exhale and that pause and push of the exhale at the bottom that that inhale just sweeps in and that's fine. Allow each exhale to release a little bit more tension in your body. And today, we're focusing on tools. We've been in this state for quite a while now, maybe longer than we thought, where we've been in unknown, we've been dealing with a state of stress. And just giving that some space today. There's a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh that says, letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If in our heart we cling to anything, anger, anxiety, possessions, we cannot be free. Each exhale, find some tension, or maybe even not naming it, just that big release of breath. 
And then Yoga Sutras 1.3 lists all these interruptions that keep us from this clarity, this freedom that Thich Nhat Hanh talks about. And then what's interesting is the next sutra lists the symptoms and it's pain, negative thinking, anxiety, and irregular breath. And those are all symptoms of stress. So even long before psychiatry, I think it was the early 1900s, started using the term stress, Patanjali, well, I guess it was even before the sutras, or even before Patanjali, and the sutras, they were addressing them. Unfortunately, sutras 1.32.1.39 give us tools. So today, that exhale, that long release, just knowing that there is relief. So if you haven't already brought a mantra, a intention, Maybe it's just a willingness to be open to every tool out there to manage whatever this is that we are going through. Continue to let for those big full inhales, feel the breath expand between hip points, expand your waist, feel it in your back body, up into your throat, maybe even imagine it in the crown of the head. And the exhale, slow release from the bottom to the top once again. And just when you think all that breath is gone, press a little bit more out. Let that wave of inhale flood in. If it helps to imagine just the physical components of stress kind of riding that exhale out and that push out at the bottom is just getting the last little drop. And whenever you're ready, you can Start to bring soles of the feet to the mat. So if you do have your legs up a wall, just moving really slowly back to a mat. Having those feet about hip distance. Again, maybe giving yourself a little bit of time just to let your body land here. Taking time to notice your feet and their connection to the mat. Shoulder blades. Maybe in that interim, they started to lift, let the very tops of the shoulders find your mat. And then when you're ready on your next exhale, start to windshield wipe the knees from side to side. Still bring that breath with you. So the inhale draws the knees up and the exhale releases them to the side. And I think it's really important to even just acknowledge a state of stress. So thinking of those symptoms, that irregular breathing, the um, negative thought patterns, even anxiety at any levels or pain, um, I think we get really used to just living with these. They seem normal after a while. There's lots of studies done now on what happens when we do ignore that. So then bring knees back up to center. And we'll go ahead and find that strap 
if you have a strap or a towel handy, go ahead and get that out. We're going to place that around the ball of the right foot. Left so the foot can stay down to the mat. And right now the knee, well not at any time, does it need to be straight, but we're going to keep a big kind of bend for right now, flexing into that right foot. As you take hold of the strap, try and maintain some relaxation in the upper body because we're going to be creating tension, but we don't want to then load all that tension into the upper, the trapezius, our tops of our shoulders. So keep that knee bent, take a gentle hold of the strap. And slowly just begin to draw the strap as if you were bringing your hand up over the top of your head, creating a little resistance, trying to draw your heel towards your mat. So we're just creating some tension in the back of the leg. And then on one of those slow, deep inhales, release that tension. You might even notice the leg starting to follow that hand. Once again, on the next inhale, create a little bit of tension. Knee can be bent here. There's no need to lock it out. We're just kind of lighting up the muscle. And then on the exhale, slowly turn down the dial of that tension. Maybe you notice the leg drifting a little bit farther. Keep flexing into that foot. If you want, you can maintain and just hold this stretch here. Or you can go ahead and, once again, create a little tension on the inhale. As you exhale, maybe there's a little bit more in that stretch. Tops of the shoulders soften. And then just taking that strap now in the right hand, once again, knee can be bent and maybe slowly letting that right leg drift out to the right. And if holding on is creating um, some pain or stress, feel free to bring a block. You can place your knee, letting it rest, kind of using all the layers, all the levels of the block, or just hold here. And we're gonna do the same thing so flex into that right foot and just try and bring the leg back. So we're engaging that inner thigh. Again, release as much tension as you can in the tops of the shoulders. And as you exhale, let that leg just soften. Next inhale, we try to lift it up and the hand is just kind of holding firm here, just creating that tension, it's a somatic stretching. So when we engage brain and muscle, and then when we tell it to kind of soften, um, we tend to see a little bit more flexibility occur. And then just find that space where you can soften into that stretch, keep that right foot flex, knee can be bent, tops of the shoulder soften down. I had read, um, there was an article in the New York Times that was discussing oh, this kind of languishing that we've been doing in a little bit of survival mode, and it used the word flourishing, trying to find our flourish again. So take another big, deep inhale. This time as you exhale, use your hand to draw that leg back up towards center. Now taking hold of it into the left hand. And if the left leg isn't extended, go ahead and do so. And then slowly start to bring that leg over to the left, kind of maintaining the shoulder blade down on the ground. And once again, you could always prop that leg up with a block. This might be really intense on the IT band, that outer hip. So lots of breath. Really focus on that exhale and that release. Soften your face. And um, New York Times article, and I'm, 
I love the word flourish when I was kind of looking up, um, when I was in yoga training, looking up peace and the Hebrew word peace, shalom. There wasn't really an English translation that matched all that there were for peace and compass. And the closest word that we have is flourish. Take a big, deep inhale. One more exhale. This one is intense. So be gentle, then bring that right leg back up. Release the strap. And just take a moment. Maybe you'd like to bring the leg down. Maybe you'd like to keep it up and make circles. Whatever feels good to you. Maybe you'd like to windshield wiper. But managing and being willing to not stress is part of getting to that flourishing. All right, then let's bring that right leg now. So the left sole of the foot down to the ground, cross the right leg over, draw it in. Just a different part of that hip we're getting into. Big deep inhale as you exhale, tops of the shoulders release to the mat. Release your jaw. Release belly. And bring that sole of the foot back. Take the arms out to the side. And exhale, just let the knees, you can keep them crossed here. You can stack if you prefer. But just allow them to drift to the left. Keep the right shoulder blade down to the mat. <clears throat> and then take your gaze over to your right fingertips. Big deep inhale, cleansing, clearing, slow exhale. Almost as if that inhale was kind of gathering up, cleansing all those spaces that we hold on to tension and stress. And the exhale was that wave back out to sea. Draw the knees back up to center. You can bring the right knee in just a little squeeze in the hip socket, a little clearing there. And then we'll go into the other side. So once again, bringing that strap, placing it on the ball of the left foot. That left leg, the knee can be bent, flexing into the foot. And again, think of the softening the shoulders so we're not creating tension somewhere else. On your next inhale, gently draw the hands as if your hands were gonna go up over the top of your head and the heel was trying to drive back down to the mat. And as you exhale, release that tension. So release the driving down of the heel and just let it kind of succumb to the hands. Notice maybe tiny little openings of flexibility Inhale again, create that tension, feel that whole back leg light up there. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly, let that tension kind of trickle down, that stretch. And if you'd like to just hold that stretch here, or you could keep going with that tension release, tension release. As stress remains kind of chronic in our bodies, it does take its toll and everybody is different. Some people it affects their circulation, their blood pressure, can lead to heart disease. Some people it brings extreme fatigue and ability to sleep. I think one of the newest findings is memory issues. So now 
taking that strap in the left hand knee can be bent. We're just going to gently bring that left leg out towards the left. Feel free to prop it up on a block. And again, we're going to create a little bit of tension here. So try and draw that leg back in, creating a little bit of resistance with the hand. So you notice that inner thigh is starting to light up. And as you exhale, slowly turn the dial down on that tension. Notice that leg kind of softening down. You can always use a block, especially if holding on is creating a lot in the arm, the shoulder. Feel free to let your leg rest on that block and just kind of let gravity do its thing. And in the article that discussed flourishing in the New York Times, they had a whole kind of check-in list. And what I thought was interesting is a lot of them were pretty similar to um, what we're going to get to today, Patanjali's kind of tools. Um, and I liked in Patanjali, he says, or in the sutras, and his transition, I should make clear, is not every tool is for every person, but to try them all. And maybe one doesn't work this time, but maybe something else is effective the next time. Let that exhale soften your shoulders. Take one more big, deep inhale. And as you exhale, center, take hold of the strap in the right hand. Extend the right leg down the mat if it isn't already. And then just bring that left leg gently over to the right, keeping that left foot flexed. Just find that point that you feel that stretch, but it's not painful. Again, feel free to prop that leg up on a block. And use that inhale and exhalation to carry out. You kind of think of this stretch, letting the breath kind of go through and find all the stress in this hip and the exhale is washing and clearing it out. One more big deep inhale. Long, slow. Draw that left leg back. Release the strap again. Whatever feels good to you here. Maybe it's keeping this leg up and circling the foot. Maybe you'd like to draw it down and win <clears throat> windshield wiper. And then picking up that left leg, crossing it over the top of the right, draw that right knee in the chest, just getting a little bit different area of the hip. Exhale, allow tops of the shoulders to settle down to the mat. And slowly bring that right sole of the foot back. And again, you can meet the legs here. You can stack the knees on top of each other if that feels better. Inhale, and on your next inhale, let both knees drift to the right. And maybe the gaze goes over to the left. Just a gentle twist to the back, the low back. Inhale, gently come back to center. Drop both knees into chest and the little rock from side to side, massaging out the low back. A nice little clearing compression in the hips, sockets. And then we'll find 
one side, gently rolling over to that side, and then we're going to press coming all the way up to seated. So if it feels better to you, you can bring a towel or a blanket, folding it up and then sitting on the edge of that. We're going to bring the strap again and extend the legs out in front. And you can also have a block if, so I tend to, when I flex into my feet, sometimes they'll still roll in to each other. So I like to bring a block, placing them um, kind of under my feet. I'm out of, feet are out of view. There we go. So I place a block just so I keep my feet flat and then bringing the strap on the outside of the block. It's up to you. You can also just have a strap under the balls of your feet. Kind of shift, feel those sits bones running down to the ground. Take a nice big inhale, feel the crown of the head reach up. Draw your shoulder blades down your back. So feel that softening here as you lengthen and flex and then engage those legs. So once again, kind of creating this really powerful pose here. And then just draw that heart forward if it feels good to you. Sitting upright here sometimes is just a lot already, a lot on the back, a lot on the hamstrings. If your hamstrings are really tight and this is not fun at all, feel free to bring a blanket underneath the knees, creating a nice softness in the hamstrings. But just take that breath. Inhale, elongate the crown of the head. As you exhale, you can gently use that strap, draw the heart forward. Shoulder blades gliding down your back. And just spend a little bit of time here, maybe with each inhale, drawing up from the pelvic floor, creating that length. Each exhale, slowly release forward. Letting that breath create some space as well. So one of the first tools in the sutras, especially um, if there's some negative talk, it says to practice cultivating a feeling of friendliness to those that are happy, goodwill to those that are virtuous, and neutrality to those that you perceive as wicked or evil and slowly release that strap and bend into those legs. We're gonna come into that cobbler's pose, so bringing soles of the feet together, kind of drawing them close to your seat. If you'd like to have some blocks underneath your thighs to soften into the hip sockets, or if you weren't on top of a towel or blanket before it might feel better in this pose. Once again, notice those sits bones rooting down, crown of the head reaching up, and just feel gravity here. Start to draw those knees downward, draw shoulder blades downward. Maybe the chest melts forward, maybe not. But I think it's interesting because um, when we have those negative thoughts, um, we do tend to become judgmental to ourselves, to others, and it's just kind of um, watching those thoughts, not letting them draw us in. Slowly release any tension you have off of that. You can use your hands, bring knees in, and we're going to make our way into table. So bringing the knees directly underneath hips, feel free to bring a towel or a blanket underneath the knees. Fan those fingertips nice and wide. And first just set up a little bit more of a neutral table so that low belly is drawing towards the mid back, crown of the head reaches forward. Then as you're ready on an inhale, feel those hips tilt upward, low belly sinks down. Heart shines through and your chin comes at last. As you exhale, imagine a little softening. Bend your elbows towards your knees. 
and then draw the tailbone under, press the mat away, then tuck your chin. A little flow back and forth. Using your breath, moving as slow or faster than me, it doesn't matter. Exhale, draw every last drop out. Use that low belly to press in. Exhale, really draw that exhale out. Then we'll come back to that neutral table. So again, that low belly. So belly button, if it could draw towards your mid back. I'm just gonna kind of get a little bit more into the hips. So if you lift up that left knee and kind of make some circles, so keep it at a 90 degree angle but if you could kind of circle out and then in, so kind of like fire hydrants here, but we're also working core, so that low belly is drawing in and up. So if you could think of your table being really sturdy and it's just this knee moving in a circle for the hips. So we'll go one more in this direction and then reverse, so kind of draw the leg up and then out and down. Low belly draws in, crown of the head moves forward. So there's a lot happening, but we're maintaining this stability of the core. Let's go one more big goal. Then extend that left leg and then draw it over to the right. Draw your right hip towards right shoulder. A deep inhale. Cleanse that. Exhale, release. And then bring that left knee back towards center. Take a moment just to realign your table, making it nice and sturdy. Flex into the right foot and keep all of that stability. And then we're going to kind of make that circle Keep that table as straight as possible. Keep that 90 degree angle as that leg lifts out to the side. As much mobility as we can get into our hips to keep that suppleness. <laughs> we can get up off the floor and then reverse that circle, maybe even realign your table, crown the head forward, reverse that circle. One way is always really weirder. Low belly draws in and up. One last circle, then extend that right leg. Once again, find that length in the spine. As you exhale, draw that Right leg to the left, left shoulder towards left hip. A little rock back and forth if that feels good. I'm going to say, so the, and it's probably not really that odd, but on the Yoga Sutra list of tools is to just allow sleep and analyze your dreams. So if you think about it, it's kind of just letting the subconscious tell you maybe what you might be stressed about. And again, it's not for everybody. Come back towards the center. Take a little moment to realign, maybe wiggle it out, soften the low back. And we're gonna come all the way down to our belly. So draw those elbows in, gently release the hips. Keep those hands by the side and press all 10 toenails into the mat. So your kneecaps kind of lift up. Press your pubic bone into the mat to soften into the low back. Draw your shoulder blades down back. Take a nice inhale on that little baby cobra as the heart lifts, chin lifts. 
As you exhale, slowly lower down. Keep that left hand where it is by your chest. Bring that right hand slightly forward. And we're just going to roll over towards the right, kind of pressing up like a beached whale sort of. So this right hand is kind of towards the right corner of your mat. And this, you can allow your right shoulder to drift up by your ear, feel this length here, and really see how heavy you can make your legs. Big inhale, slow release, exhale. And you can even kind of work into the neck by looking down towards the hand and then towards the opposite um, corner maybe of your room, softening into the neck. Noticing our exhales, our breath can become shallow when we're stressed. So elongating the exhale when we notice that shallow breathing. And then gently, gently roll back down to your belly. Once again, aligning those hands back by the chest. Another little baby cobra, so strengthen up those legs. Press toenails into the mat, pubic bone into the mat, draw your shoulders back. Take an inhale, little lift to the chest. Nice inhale. As you exhale, lower down, that left hand is going to come forward and just roll over to the left. So press up. This left shoulder can drift up towards left ear. Let those legs feel really heavy. Just kind of um, like a beached whale. <laughs> feel that opening in the side. And again, if you'd like to and then get some movement in the neck. Go ahead and look down towards the left hand and up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, really slow, steady, long exhales. Um, there's a really interesting book called Three Deep Breaths. And in it, it states that it, that's all it takes, three deep breaths to allow the body to realize that it can move out of that state of fight or flight. And then gently roll back down to your belly, bringing those hands by your side. Once again, tucking the toes and setting the hips Back. We're going to come into our first downward dog. So tucking the toes, fan out your fingers. Take a moment maybe to bend into each knee. Take a nice big inhale, cleansing, clearing, exhale. And then as you're ready on your next inhale, let that right leg float up. As you exhale, soften everything to earth. So elbows bend straight back, knee bends, and then you press the mat away. Right foot becomes right behind the right hand. Slowly soften that left knee to the mat. You can use blocks here on either side if you'd like. You can take a moment to inhale, grow long here through the spine, lifting up through the pelvic floor. If you'd like, you could come all the way up. Shoulder blades released down your back. Find a little bit of scissoring action, like a little energetic pull between that right heel and left knee to soften into the low back before you let your hips drift downward and forward to maintain that support of the low back. Shoulder blades drifting down your back. As you exhale, you can bring those hands either to the floor or maybe to blocks. Gently bring that right arm to the inside and then just let that right knee and toes kind of angle outward. So I'm not sure <clears throat> if I'm getting this angle that you can see, but so we're in this low lunge and you're just letting the toes and that knee drift towards the outside, noticing a little bit more maybe 
action here on the inner thigh. Maintain all that length though. Crown of the head reaches up. That's why I like to use the blocks to maintain that length. Shoulder blades drawing down the back. As you exhale, bring that foot forward. Right hand comes back to the outside and then send those hips back into that half pyramid. Once those hips reach back, take an inhale, find some length in the spine, drop from the pelvic floor, then let that heart melt forward. So the next sutra says to engage in the senses. When you feel these symptoms of stress, so maybe it's taking a walk outside, listening to music, Maybe it's cooking or lighting a candle, just turning to our senses, coming back forward whenever you're ready, placing hands on either side of that right foot, lift up the back leg, back to downward dog. Making that kind of connection back to body when we connect back to our senses. As you exhale, really press hands and feet into the mat. Feel your spine create a little length there. And then whenever you're ready, let that left leg float up. Soften down to earth as you exhale. Bring that left foot behind the left hand. Soften the right knee down. You can use blocks here or hands on either side to create some length as you inhale. Maybe those hands draw all the way up. Once again, be mindful of that low back. Maybe a little tension between the heel and the knee. And then maybe those hips sink down and forward. Shoulder blades back down your back, wherever you are. And then getting out of that loop in our mind by maybe creating bringing those hands back down, maybe to blocks, bringing that left leg towards the inside, and then just letting that knee and foot drift open, whatever feels good to you. But just make sure the toes are going as well, so you don't want to keep the foot and just draw the knee out. The toes are going to follow. And this may not be your jam. This may not feel good to you. Just keep your legs straight. This is just a little different um, angle to open up the hip. Bring that toes and knee back. Hand can come to the other side. As you exhale, send those hips back. Once you find that sweet stretch spot, take an inhale to create some length in the spine. Exhale, maybe the heart melts forward a little bit more. Both hands coming on either side and send it back to downward facing dog. Exhale it out. Big deep inhale, cleansing, clearing exhale. Then as you're ready, lift up that right leg. Exhale, soften down to the mat. Bring that right foot just behind the right hand. You can bring blocks here if you'd like. Take an inhale to gather up some length. As you exhale, find that right hand. So I like to leave my left hand here on this block. Sweep that right hand up like you're making a big circle towards your back of your left heel. And then come back with that circle, replacing the right left hand with the right towards the inside. Pivot that back foot so it's parallel to the mat. Take a moment to find this um, stability here, find that length, and then begin to open up the chest, lifting up the left hand, extend at side angle. You can take your gaze up to your fingertips, bend into that back knee, find your core here as if you could lift up through your center coming into warrior two. Take your gaze over those right fingertips, shoulder blades glide down your back. On your next inhale, find a little reverse. Right hand floats up. Exhale, bring it back to where to. 
This time, inhale, bring those hands, if it feels good to you, clasping them behind your back, and open up the chest. As you exhale, maybe the chest kind of turns gently towards that front knee and floats down into the humble warrior. But keep all this energy into the knife, into the back foot to stabilize you. Release the hands, come back into down facing dog. Take a moment. Big deep inhale, one of those cleansing exhales. Release your jaw. As you're ready, inhale, lift up that left foot. Exhale, soften down to the earth. Left foot by that left hand. You can use those blocks as you inhale to create some length in the spine. As you exhale, sweep the left hand like a big giant moon, tracing it towards the back. Let your gaze follow. Inhale, coming back. That left hand can replace the right on that block. Right foot pivot so it's parallel to the back of your mat. Take a moment to find that stability here, lengthen the spine. Then open up the chest, open up the hip. Beautiful. Bend into that right knee. Find that core strength. Exhale it up to where to. Inhale, float it up. Exhale, back to where to. Find that clasp with the hands and inhale, open up the chest. As you exhale, rotate your chest kind of towards the front, palm board, float down. You don't have to keep your hands clasped here. And then release, come back to downward facing dog. Big deep inhale, cleansing, clearing, exhale. So I think we have time. Let's go through that flow one more time, a little bit more flowy, I guess, now that we know where we're going. As you're ready, inhale the right leg up. Exhale, bring that right foot. Gather up some length. As you exhale, sweep that right hand. You're making a big full moon towards the back. Inhale. Bring that right hand to the inside, pivot that back foot parallel to the mat. Find your stability, then open up the chest, extended side angle. Find your core, bend the back knee, exhale it up to warrior two. Inhale, find that reverse, right hand floats up. Exhale, back to warrior two. Clasp the hands. Open the heart. As you exhale, you can kind of pivot forward, but not all the way. Keep some space for that back knee. Humble that chest down and release. Send it back to downward facing dog. Big deep inhale, cleansing, clearing, exhale. Next inhale, that left leg floats up. As you exhale, bring it through, left foot behind left hand. Inhale, gather up some length. As you exhale, sweep, make that big circle with the left hand all the way to the back. And exhale, come back forward. Replace that left right hand with the left, put it the back foot. Open the chest, extended side angle. As you exhale, Press, use your core to come up to where to. Next, inhale, that left hand floats up, reverse. Exhale, where to. Inhale, clasp the hands, open up the chest. As you exhale, kind of just move that torso forward, humble, warrior down. Release the hands, come back to Downward facing dog. One more big deep inhale up from the earth into your feet like your arms and legs are straws. Exhale. Press that breath back into the earth. 
On your next inhale, come up high on those toes. Wave the spine forward, bend into the knees. Bring the knees wide, toes together. Little child's pose here. So you can either keep reaching the hands forward, bring your hands back by your hips. You can even reach those hands in between, kind of reaching back for your feet. And just settle down, focus on that breath. Big, deep inhales. So one of his tools, one of the tools in the sutras is to reflect on something greater than yourself. So whatever that is, if it's a need of others, if it's whatever you think of as your higher power, if it's the situation, volunteering comes to mind that was in the article. Big, deep inhale, puff up that back body nice and big, big and slowly, slowly release that exhale. Walk the torso up and come back. Slowly. Draw the knees into the chest. If it feels good to rock from side to side. Draw that right knee into chest. Extend the left leg down on the And then gently draw that right knee over to the left as the right shoulder blade stays towards the mat. So I think one of the simplest on in the Yoga Sutras, but yet probably the hardest is it simply states, ask for help. And I think just recognizing those symptoms when they arise and allowing ourselves to humble ourselves enough to ask for help. Take another deep breath here. On that exhale, release the shoulders, the jaw, the neck, the throat. Come back towards center, nice and gentle. Bring that right knee to chest. And then switch it out. The mat, take that left arm out to the side as you gently draw that left knee over to the right. Left shoulder softens down, gaze can go to the left. Big deep breath and a cleansing exhale here. Really slow release. You can release your jaw, you can hum, you can sigh. And the other sutra that just has to stick with it, all of the tools. And I think the stick with it comes with the just keep trying. Because when we find ourselves in this state of stress, it often feels easier to not try, <laughs> to just let that wave of whatever it is, anxiety or pain, negative thinking, just kind of take us out. It almost seems easier than climbing up that mountain to freedom. It means carving out space for all of these ideas and more, not, not just what is in the sutras. Draw that left knee back. And bring both knees to the chest. Let them drift towards the outside of the 
ribs bring soles of the feet up to the ceiling, a little happy baby. So you can take hold of your calf, your ankle, the knife edges of your feet, and just allow a little rock from side to side. And allow some freedom here. You can straighten into each leg. You can move your neck, whatever it is that you need. Allow the tops of your shoulders to soften, belly to soften, face to soften. Maybe it smiles, maybe it doesn't, maybe you don't feel like it, that's okay. And allow any last little bit of movements that you need. Maybe it's a little dead bug, maybe it's just some circling of the knees, windshield wipers, whatever it is that you need, go ahead and take that for yourself. And then just make sure that you do give yourself some space. So we'll just spend the last couple of minutes in final resting pose. So whenever you're finished moving, just let your feet be wide, on the edges of your mat, let them fall open, bring your arms away from your sides, palms up and draw the shoulder blades down your back so the tops of the shoulders can meet your mat. Big deep inhale, expand the low belly, expand the ribs up into the collarbone. As you exhale, slowly open your jaw and soften your belly, soften your throat. <sighs> let it release. One more breath. And then just allow the space of stillness. And as always, spend as much time as you can in this final resting pose. And when you're ready, you can make some small movements in your fingers, small movements in your toes. And maybe let those movements just organically start to become larger circles into your ankles, circles into your wrists. And as you're ready, maybe you'd like to inhale and reach one more last big stretch, arms overhead. And as you exhale, you can draw your knees to your chest or just bring soles of the feet to the mat, whichever feels better to you. Take a moment to make some movements in your neck, moving your head from side to side. And then as you're ready, let yourself drift over to one side, kind of resting in a fetal position, letting your cheek rest on your bicep. And just take a moment there. Maybe it's to 
Send a little bit of gratitude to yourself for this space. Maybe it's just reflecting on how your body feels in this moment. Just allow that little reflection. And then as you feel ready, start to slowly press yourself up to any easy seated position. So if you wanted to bring the edge of your seat to a towel or a blanket, go ahead and do so. You can place something underneath your thighs. Take an inhale, reach the crown of the head upward as you exhale, shoulder blades glide down your back. And so my last quote is just from Swami Ramey, and he says, contentment is falling in love with your life. So if I, if I can add anything to flourishing, I think that would be it. It's just falling in love with your life. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, and I hope you are really gentle with yourselves and kind of come back to whatever tool it is that that you personally enjoy to bring some ease to this, this place. <laughs> Thank you guys.